I'm a music teacher by trade. I teach at the High School of Commerce in Springfield, Massachusetts. Our school was built in 1915. Here's what the first High School of Commerce band looked like back then. We've come a long way since 1915. Here's my class today. Now, most of you are probably thinking, we've heard this talk before about the connections between math and music, teaching like a champion, or how today it's more important than ever to build strong, individualized relationships with your students. But this isn't that talk. This is about how my students at the High School of Commerce are on the cutting edge of a 400-year-old art form. One of the most important things we can do in music education is to get out of the classroom and go see professional musicians. We have a fantastic orchestra right down the street, the Springfield Symphony Orchestra. I had season tickets with my grandfather growing up, and now I'm on their board of directors. A few years ago, I took my class to an open rehearsal of the symphony. This is something that music students have been doing for hundreds of years. Go to a rehearsal, watch the maestro, incorporate what you heard and saw into your own playing. Mozart did it, Beethoven did it, we all did it. Sit, listen, and learn. Well, when I took my students, much was the same, but there was one important difference, the smartphone. We were studying the rehearsal, like always, when I felt a vibration from my phone. It was a student, two rows down. You see, in all these hundreds of years of students studying orchestra rehearsals, the one thing they haven't been able to do is ask their teacher questions while the orchestra is playing. It would be too loud and disruptive. The maestro, of course, requires complete silence and attention. But that day was different. I got a text message. A silent question from a trumpet player asking about a particular technique someone was using on stage. For the first time, through the power of technology, a music teacher was able to ask and answer questions during an orchestra rehearsal. We had a rousing lesson via group chat about all the things that were happening on the stage, in the score, and in the life of the composer that led us to be hearing this particular piece in this particular manner. My students didn't know it at the time, but they had the start of an idea for what I think will become the next sensation in the world of attending concerts, classical or otherwise. This first rehearsal has led to the development of a new program at the Springfield Symphony Orchestra called Real-Time Concert Notes. With Real-Time Concert Notes, we are able to take an art form hundreds of years old and let you experience it in a totally new way. Just like a museum might give you an audio guide to its works of visual art, we can now give you a visual guide to our audio works of art. Aside from my students sparking the need for this new educational technology, we were inspired by some of the great musical teachers of recent memory, Leonard Bernstein and Michael Tilson Thomas. Bernstein is one of the greatest American musicians of all time in any genre. He wrote West Side Story, conducted every major orchestra, and worked throughout his life to find new ways to explain old music. In 1954, he appeared on the CBS show Omnibus, and walked a live audience at home through Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. The stage was arranged with a larger-than-life score of the symphony, and Bernstein instructed the musicians in the orchestra to move around on top of the parts they were playing to show the audience what Beethoven was thinking. This TV series later evolved into the Young People's Concerts. Between 1958 and 1972, Bernstein and CBS put on 53 nationally televised lectures about classical music. However, as well-intentioned as Bernstein and his lectures were, they were not that different than any lecture in a music history class. Bernstein stops the orchestra, he talks to the students, he starts the orchestra up again. Michael Tilson Thomas, conductor, student of Bernstein's, and former TED stage speaker, expands on the ideas of his teacher and the Young People's Concerts with his 2006 PBS series, Keeping Score. The maestro does a masterful job of walking the audience through the intricacies of Beethoven or Mahler, just as Bernstein did, but he does this on location, where the composers lived and worked. It adds a great sense of vitality and relevance to a piece of music that is usually only ever heard in the abstract. Not only can you get an explanation of what's happening in the music, but you can get background information on why it was written in that particular fashion. Still, these TV programs don't change how we experience music in the concert hall, the jazz club, or your 12-year-old's violin recital for that matter. When we got the idea for real-time concert notes two years ago, we had to find a way to use cheap, available technology to, use the, to do the job. We ended up using a bulk text messaging platform. It was a good start, but there was plenty of room for improvement. For starters, patrons forgetting to silence their phones would get a series of alerts before finally finding the vibrate button in the dark. 
Additionally, receiving a text message in a dark symphony hall created all kinds of light pollution. We tried to designate special sections of the hall for the text portion of the program, but attendees paying for certain seats are unlikely to move up six flights of stairs where the elevator doesn't go to try a new program. Certainly not a new technological program for a 400-year-old art form. But more than that, these bulk texting platforms aren't designed for precise, rapid-fire communications. When I was operating real-time concert notes last year, I had to make seven different mouse clicks on five different pages just to send one text. As you can imagine, it's hard to do things in real time when you're concerned about mouse clicks, lag time, and Wi-Fi connectivity. Even still, with the success of Real-Time Concert Notes 1.0, we decided to enlist the help of a local tech startup to improve our patron experience. When the Symphony decided to use this new publishing platform and its app, XX Glen General Live Event Notes, the Symphony became their first client. Today, with Real-Time Concert Notes powered by XX Glen, we're able to precisely deliver the same information you got from Leonard Bernstein or Michael Tilson Thomas in the palm of your hand at exactly the right moment, exactly when it's needed the most, in the concert hall and during the concert. When the Springfield Symphony Orchestra had their opening night with the Third Symphony by Aaron Copeland, the slides occurred on average at 90 second intervals, so as not to be too disruptive to the live music experience. For the sake of this demonstration, I've compressed five slides into roughly a minute and a half and included a final slide, which would have occurred at the end of the concert, just to show how we wrap, the, wrap up the program and further engage with the audience. Let's take a look at what that looks like in action. Here's what the debut of real-time concert notes, powered by XX Glenn, looked like at opening night of the Springfield Symphony Orchestra. But this isn't really just about live tweeting some notes out of the conductor's score. Imagine for a moment what XX Glenn can do for all types of arts and communities. The last time you went to a museum, I bet you saw one of these. Or maybe one of these. Or did it look like this? The smartphone in your pocket is 20 million times more powerful than the technology that landed on the moon in 1969. Why don't we use the technology we have, the technology we use the most? Museums invest tens of thousands of dollars in hardware that will be obsolete in three years, and they still have to create and curate the digital content anyways. Why not leverage the technology that your patrons come in with? It's cheaper, easier, and especially more sanitary. Tour guides walking large groups through a historical district in multiple languages? XX Glen simultaneously translates into any languages needed for your tour group. Do you love going to live sporting events but miss the great color commentary and stats you get while watching at home? XX Glenn can bring everything to your seat. Are you at a TED Talk and want to know more about the speaker, the topic, or see the data in depth? XX Glenn can do it all. People used to talk about the future like it was a long ways away. In 2020, we're going to have such and such and this and that. Well, the future is here. We can finally have our cake and eat it too. We have the power in the palm of our hands to transform the way we view the world around us. You don't have to take it all the way to the moon, but you can at least go to the symphony. Imagine all the other possibilities.
Thank you.